uh, as we as in the last session we'll take questions at the end of the session uh, if you have a specific things that you want to reach out directly to Akil, please do so via email uh, now we'll have a talk on the quantum imaginary time estimation algorithm uh, that uh, developed by Garnet Chan at Caltech, and the talk will be given by one of our postdocs, Dr. Jean Loopville. Take it away, Jean Loop. Yes. Um, okay. Um, do you see my screen? Yes. All right. So, um, yes, thank you for having me talking uh, about this today. So it's going to be about the quantum imaginary time evolution algorithm, yeah, which was um, um, which has been de developed in uh, in Caltech. Um, so it's an algorithm to find um, which has which can be used for several things, but one of the important thing is to find the ground state of a Hamiltonian. Um, and another type of algorithm which has attracted a lot of attention um, is the VQE algorithm in the NISC area. But I will try to uh, convince you that the KITE, Kite algorithm also has uh, advantages. So the VQE has been used uh, to compute the ground state of several Hamiltonians, so that the uh, two qubit dihydrogen uh, molecular Hamiltonian. Uh, some short range 1D Heisenberg uh, Hamiltonian. But the one we'll be focusing on uh, for this talk is the uh, 1D uh, antiferromagnetic transverse field uh, Ising model. So I give you the Hamiltonian here, uh, pretty well known Hamiltonian. And let me first remind you uh, how does the variational uh, quantum eigensolver work? Um, so the idea is that it's a hybrid. Uh, quantum classical algorithm, which means that uh, at each step of the algorithm, there will be a quantum part done on the QPU, on the quantum unit, and the classical part, uh, which will be done on the classical computer, and which usually is an optimization part. So in the case of uh, VQE, there is uh, an ansatz here, so I show here uh, the ansatz which was used uh, in, a, in a work by, uh, by Google for two qubits, where there is a variational parameter. So here is the theta he, here on this uh, Z gate, uh, which will be optimized at each step, and the feedback is given by the tomography. So um, either all the polys or part of the polys uh, which are measured on the uh, quantum part of the algorithm. So uh, this has been pretty good uh, in this uh, NISC uh, hardware era, uh, but there are some problems uh, with the VQE, uh, one being that you need an ansatz, and you need that uh, the ansatz can allow you um, to, um, to kind of move in the Hilbert space and that you can really find uh, at least overlap with, uh, totally with the ground state by, you, by changing the parameters. Uh, so you need this, and there is also the optimization part, which in recent work has 30 or even more actually parameters. Um, so there is also some complication here. But there are yeah, all these works, and when, when work was done uh, in our group uh, earlier. Um, but so why using the uh, KITE algorithm? I first explain you the, uh, the idea what is an early time evolution. So you all know that under the Schrodinger equation, uh, the evolution of the wave function would uh, be something like this, where you decompose on the eigenbasis, and all the um, energy uh, eigenstates give the evolution for the corresponding weight. But if you replace the time t by an imaginary time, so minus i beta, um, you will get an evolution like this, where this time it's not anymore a unitary evolution, uh, but it's still weighted by all these uh, eigen energies. And so all the, the, wave, um, the wave vector of the basis will decay, but actually one will decay slower than the other, which is the one corresponding to the ground state. 
So if you start with a wave function which has some overlap with the true ground state, in the limit of infinite imaginary time, you will actually converge to the ground state. And the good point uh, with this is that there is no need of an ansatz. So that's a very interesting part. But the complication here comes from the fact that here, uh, some non-unitary uh, evolution is needed. Um, and in this paper, so in Caltech, they found a way to do this without using uh, ancillae, which uh, is usually how these type of non-unitary uh, evolutions are done. Um, so we will um, follow a bit the lines uh, of this paper. So the, the way they manage to, uh, to mimic this uh, non-unitary evolution is through a linearization and solving a linear system. And basically, so here, this is what will be done So here for two qubits uh, at step n. So it's um, many uh, unitaries which are done one after the others. And at the end, we, we measure the expectation or all the xx, iz, if there are two qubits. And from this, we can solve a linear system which will give us uh, what will be the new generators for the new time step. So here, u n plus 1, which will be added. Can you close then, your video because you're cutting out as well for a few times? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, but you're talking to us from France, so <laughs> we are thankful that you're doing this. So it's a bit please, further away. Just cut out the video for a higher bandwidth. Okay, I hope it's better. Um, yeah, so that's how we go from step n to step n plus one. So we did this first as, in, as it is done in the Caltech paper for a single qubit. Um, so here the Hamiltonian is a single field Hamiltonian, z plus x. Uh, uh, where if we don't, so if we just add the steps, as I was saying, we get this kind of result for the energy here. So it converges, but we see that for a very high number of gates, we start to see uh, some problems happening. So what we did was we simply concatenate the gates. It's easy to do for one qubit. And then we see the perfect convergence to the true ground state for a single qubit. So then we wanted to do that for, uh, uh, for two qubits. Um, and this time we uh, concatenate, so we concatenate the gate, and we can concatenate then in uh, in two C, in only three C nodes using the CAC, the CAC algorithm. Uh, and we got this kind of uh, single kite trajectories where we see some jumps happening. So this is because our system is noisy, and um, when we solve the linear system, we actually see this noise happening. We average several trajectories. Um, we can compute some error bars, and we see that our results um, are quite comparable to uh, what was done in their work where they used uh, the Rigetti uh, online uh, system. So we managed to uh, reproduce this kind of result. But then we used some uh, noise tailoring uh, um, on this, and we went from this kind of behavior with all the jumps uh, to a behavior where the jumps are much more mitigated. So this time we don't need to average the traces, we converge. And actually we found a better way where we converge and the good point is we are now able to converge at about 1% of error, uh, both in energy, so this is the error on the true ground state energy. And here's the infidelity from the ground state um, so still versus the imaginary time. And we think that we see that using these methods, uh, we managed to go below 1% for both. So now the, um, what we would like to do is to uh, increase the number of qubits. Um, so there are several ways. Uh, in their paper uh, for uh, going to three qubits, the, there would be two different ways, what they call D equal two, which correspond to these two unitaries. Um, or a d equals three, which corresponds to a big unitary. And that's actually what we are starting to do. And uh, Costin will talk about this uh, a bit later. 
uh, where they have very efficient uh, algorithms to reduce uh, the number of CNOTs to be able to make the, the new unitary uh, in as few uh, CNOTs as possible. Um, and they already implemented that for three uh, and four qubits. And there is also some finite temperature simulation, which could be done where this algorithm clearly demonstrates uh, an edge over VQE. And with this, I thank you for your attention. And I leave the floor to Alexi, I think. Okay. Thank